This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jesse Kraft, uh, American Curator of Numismatics here at the ANS. I'm going to uh, announce and, uh, and uh, play MC today for everyone. Um, today, we have a very special guest, uh, Mark Marko or Mike Markowitz, uh, who's a member of the American Numismatic Society, of course, as well as a uh, member of the Ancient Numismatic Society of Washington. Uh, he's been a serious collector of ancient coins since 1993. Uh, he is also a war game designer, a historian, and defense analyst. Uh, he has degrees in history from the University of Rochester in New York and social ecology of the, or from the University of California, Irvine. Uh, he was born in New York City and lives in uh, Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, again, this is long table number 95, uh, Coins of the Crusades. Mike, uh, please, this is our honor. Uh, take it away. Thank you, Jesse. The honor is very much mine. I'll share my screen here and go to full screen. <clears throat> Between the years 1096 and 1291, the Church of Rome, the nobles, and the peoples of Western Europe fought a series of military campaigns against the Muslim rulers of the Eastern Mediterranean or the Middle East or the Levant, or if you prefer, the Holy Land. It was all about the holy city of Jerusalem, which had been held by the Muslims since they conquered it from the Byzantine Empire in the year 638. During its long history, Jerusalem has been attacked 52 times, captured and recaptured 44 times, besieged 23 times, and destroyed twice, once by the Babylonians and once by the Romans. Uh, the Crusaders created a series of states that issued coins. These were mostly debased silver, an alloy, called Bilon. There was some copper small change, some uh, lead tokens, and gold pieces imitating the current circulating Muslim dinar. Today, crusader coins are mostly found in Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Turkey, although they also turn up in hordes uh, in Western Europe brought back by retain, returning crusaders. These crusaders carved out a series of short-lived feudal states. Collectively, these were known as Outremer, over the sea, and their in inhabitants were referred to as Franks, although they were not all French. Church Latin, medieval French, Greek and Arabic were the common spoken languages with a European aristocracy ruling over a largely Syrian Christian and Muslim population. Crusader coins survive in surprising abundance and they have much to tell us about this distant era which has so many parallels to contemporary conflicts in this strife torn region. Uh, in this period, the population of Constantinople was probably about as many as 300,000. Rome had perhaps 30,000 people, London and Paris less than 10,000. I've highlighted Venice and Genoa on this map because these two great commercial maritime rival city-states were important players in what is to come. Europe at the end of the 11th century when the Crusades began was beginning to see the formation of nation states based on language, a process that would not really be completed until the 19th century. But kings were generally weak compared to the great barons who controlled the land and employed the knights. What sort of money did the Franks carry with them to the Holy Land? 
Well, the circulating coinage of 11th century Europe consisted of feudal pennies, deniers, or deniers, uh, weighing about 1.3 grams. You might recall that uh, the penny weight of 24 grains is defined as 1.555 grams or 1 20th of a troy ounce. But these coins were generally uh, struck uh, underweight. Uh, they had crude inscriptions that were generally made with uh, simple punches uh, and uh, almost invariably had the design of a cross. Some bore the names of a name of a king or an emperor, but local barons, warlords, bishops, or abbots issued many of them. As I said, the alloy billon was typically 30 to 40% silver, sometimes much worse. Uh, the ex exception was the coinage of England, which was struck in sterling silver, 92.5% pure, the rest being copper. The um, denier had little purchasing power. A rabbit might cost five, a fat chicken six. Large sums were reckoned in monies of account, like the mark of 160 uh, deniers or the livre of 240. A good war horse might cost 80 livres, a knight's armor 40. In contrast, the Muslim world and the Byzantine Empire through which the Crusaders passed on their way to the war were on a gold standard. The dinars of the Fatimid dynasty, which ruled in Egypt from 909 to 1171, were better than 95% pure gold, weighing about four grams. The Byzantine hyperpyron of Emperor Alexios Komnenos, who was the ruler in Constantinople at the time of the Crusades, was about 85% gold and weighed 4.4 grams. Silver was uh, scarce in both the Muslim and Byzantine economies, but there was an abundant supply of copper small change in the cities, something that had mostly disappeared in the medieval West. Whenever you see an abundant copper coinage, it means there's usually a flourishing urban economy where people need to make small daily purchases like a loaf of bread, right, or a cup of wine. Here are the Crusader states at the height of their power uh, about the year 1135. The county of Edessa, the principality of Antioch, the county of Tripoli, and the kingdom of Jerusalem. A county in this sense being a state ruled by a count. Let's talk about Antioch. This was the first crusader state to be established. A strongly walled city backed up against a mountain. The ancient city of Antioch on the Orontes, which is now Antakya, Turkey, was held at the time by a garrison of Seljuk Turks, 16,000 strong. After a bitter nine month siege, an Armenian tower guard was bribed to let a band of crusaders scale the wall and open a gate. On June 3rd, 1098, today is the anniversary, the Crusaders massacred the Muslim defenders and the Greek Orthodox residents of the city with equal fury. A Norman knight, Bohemond of Taranto, claimed the city as his own, despite the solemn vow the Crusaders had made to the Byzantine Empire to return any conquered territory. Bohemond founded a dynasty that lasted until Antioch was taken by the Egyptian Mamluks in 1268 
and in exile even after that. The early crusader coinage of Antioch consisted of crude coppers modeled on the contemporary Byzantine anonymous folis. Uh, autonomous, uh, anonymous Billon deniers appeared around 1130. And the long-lived Bohemond III, who reigned from 1144 to 1201, uh, his coins are rarely com common with a distinctive head of a mailed and helmeted knight on the obverse. After storming Antioch and defeating a Muslim relief army that advanced from Mosul in Iraq, the Crusaders slowly crept towards their goal, Jerusalem. On July 15, 1099, using siege towers constructed from the timbers of dismantled Genoese ships, the walls of the city were breached. On the Temple Mount, according to a Frankish chronicler, the slaughter was so great that our men waded in blood up to their ankles. Godfrey of Bouillon, who lived from 1060 to 1100, a leader of the Franks, refused the kingship of Jerusalem, feeling that the city was too sacred, that uh, no one should wear a crown of earthly glory in the city where our Lord wore a crown of thorns. Uh, he was willing to accept the title Defender of the Holy Sepulcher, Advocatus Sancti Sepulchri. But when Godfrey died in 1100, his brother Baldwin, who had established the county of Edessa, accepted the title of King of Jerusalem, which was borne by his successors down to the fall of the kingdom in 1291. Except for a unique copper folus attributed to Baldwin I, the earliest crusader coinage of Jerusalem was a series of Bilan deniers struck under Baldwin III beginning about 1143. Baldwin III's extensive coinage is divided into a crudely executed rough series and a later smooth series of slightly finer style. The, uh, it bears a short cross uh, surrounded by the king's name and title, Baldvinus Rex, and the reverse depicts the Tower of David, an ancient stone citadel that was built against the city walls that served as a fortified palace and probably the location of the mint. The reverse inscription is De Jerusalem, which continues from the obverse. Remember that in medieval Latin, there is no J. So Jerusalem is spelled with an initial I. Baldwin's successor, Amalri or Amalric, changed the obverse design to a stylized image of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, believed to be the site of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. The kingdom also produced an anonymous series of deniers that are described as pilgrim coins that bear a double barred patriarchal cross flanked by palm fronds, which you see at the bottom of this slide. These may have been elite presentation pieces or Easter souvenirs. The design recalls the very rare ceremonial silver coinage of seventh century Byzantine emperors. When numismatists don't know the purpose of a coinage, it is generally described as ceremonial. This is one of the most interesting 
to me coins and it's in the ans collection a rare example was also sold in uh the uh, january triton 25 cng auction it's a very lightweight anonymous uh, coin that's inscribed sancta area the holy area uh, it's possible that this was actually struck by the Knights Templars who had taken over the um, Al-Aqsa Mosque as their headquarters and renamed it uh, the Temple of Solomon. To distinguish it from the Dome of the Rock, which was called the Templum Domini, the Lord's Temple. The Al-Aqsa Mosque was transformed into the headquarters of the Templars. This may be the only coin that was ever issued by the Templars, although it may also have been issued by the other crusading order of knights, the uh, Hospitallers, who we'll talk about later. It's a fascinating piece in the uh, CNG auction. An example went for $1,200. You notice that the, the uh, low-grade billon often turns black uh, over time. Around the year 1140, Jerusalem began minting imitations of the contemporary gold dinar of the Muslim Fatimid caliphs of Egypt. In crusader documents, these are called Saracenic Bezets, Saracen being the medieval term for Muslim, and Bezant or Bexant, the generic word for a gold coin from Byzantium, the ancient name of Constantinople. The Saracenic Bezant was lighter than the Fatimid dinar and inferior in purity. On early pieces, the Arabic legends are carefully executed, but they gradually become blundered and eventually just a series of strokes, dots, and circles. Cut gold triangular or rectangular fragments weighing a fraction of a gram often turn up in crusader hordes. No complete coins bearing the same designs are found. So archeologists believe these were made as offering pieces for pilgrims who wanted to make a donation in gold at a holy site, but could not afford an entire dinar which represented something like a month's salary for a foot soldier. Uh, here are the Tower of David and the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which still exist in Jerusalem, much restored and rebuilt over the centuries. Far inland from the Syrian coast, Edessa, which is now the town of San Liurfa, Turkey, um, became the seat of a short-lived county established by Baldwin of Boulogne, who broke away from the main crusader army to carve out his own territory. After Baldwin became king of Jerusalem, his cousins succeeded him at Edessa. Odessa mainly minted copper coins called foles. These coins are crudely struck with a standing figure of the count in armor and an abbreviated Greek inscription because the population of the town spoke Greek um, that reads something like Bagdoinos Dulos Stauros, Baldwin, Servant of the Cross. A few base silver deniers were overstruck on Muslim dirhams. In 1144, Edessa fell to a Muslim army. Jocelyn II, the last count, was captured, 
blind and blinded and imprisoned in a dungeon at Aleppo until he died in 1159. His coins are extremely rare. The fall of Edessa led to the unsuccessful Second Crusade. The county of Tripoli, captured by Bertrand of Toulouse in 1109, the port of Tripoli on the coast of Lebanon, became the seat of what may be the longest surviving crusader state. Bertrand struck some rare deniers, but the coinage of Tripoli takes definitive form under Count Raymond II, who ruled from 1137 to 1152. On this slide, we see a coin of Raymond III, 1152 to 1182. 1187. Um, <clears throat> the, the coins off of rulers that bear the same given name are often difficult to distinguish because the custom of putting the Roman numeral after the ruler's name doesn't really become established in medieval coinage until the 16th century. The inscription Civitas Tripolis, city of Tripoli, appears around a starburst on the reverse, an eight-rayed star, which became a kind of emblem on the coinage. Uh, Tripoli probably issued the very rare Agnus Dei gold bezant with the image of the Lamb of God. This coin is so rare that the only example that I could find is in the collection of the ANS. Um, uh, and uh, I when I checked Mantis, the ANS database, uh, this is no longer attributed to any mint, but uh, simply cataloged as uncertain. The uh, inscription, Agnus Dei Qui Tolis Pecata Mundi, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And around the cross on the other side is the acclamation, Christ conquers, Christ rules, Christ reigns. Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat. The um, coronation acclamation of Frankish kings. It's a spectacular and very rare coin. The same uh, design of the starburst appears on a series of small coppers struck by the county of Tripoli. And this coin comes uh, with a story. It's a coin I was asked to identify some years ago. It had been picked up on the beach at Jubail the ancient city of Byblos, uh, Lebanon, um, and by a French archaeologist in the 1930s who bequeathed it to his daughter, who married an American naval officer, who asked me to identify these coins. Um, Worn, corroded, and clipped. It's strange that such a low-valued copper coin would be worth clipping, but somebody must have thought so. The Kingdom of Jerusalem issued a series of imitations of Islamic dirhams replacing the Muslim religious inscriptions on the coin with Christian inscriptions right in perfectly grammatical and carefully executed Arabic. Um, uh, and these inscriptions basically are um, sort of intended to, uh, to counter the, uh, the Muslim shahada, the profession of faith, faith that appears on Islamic coins. On, in one case, one God, one faith, one baptism struck an acre in the year 1201 of the, in, from the incarnation. Very unusual 
uh, to have a coin dated according to the Christian era in Arabic. And then Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, his is the glory forever and ever. So these are fascinating coins. Al Nasir Salah al Din Yusuf ibn Ayyub, known to the Crusaders as Saladin, was of Kurdish ancestry. He was born in 1137 in Tikrit in Iraq, uh, the hometown of Saddam Hussein. His uncle was a general in the army of one of the Muslim dynasties that ruled the region. And he accompanied his uncle on campaign and eventually gained control of Egypt, Syria, parts of Arabia and Yemen, uh, a substantial empire. In 1187, at the decisive battle of Hattin, he defeated the kingdom of Jerusalem. He recaptured the holy city and this sparked the third crusade. In 1191, at the Battle of Arsuf, um, you see the location of there on the map, Saladin's army was defeated by King Richard the Lionheart. Oddly enough, Saladin and Richard became best friends and they negotiated a peace treaty that allowed Christian pilgrims access to Jerusalem. Saladin died in 1193. His tomb in Damascus still exists. And here's an example of uh, the uh, gold dinar that was struck in the name of Saladin uh, in Egypt. Richard the Lionheart is remembered as one of England's greatest kings, but in truth, he was Norman French. Uh, he uh, barely spoke English and supposedly uh, had contempt for England and its people. Uh, he found the country wet and boring and said he would sell the city of London to anyone who could come up with a few shillings. Um, all the English coinage of the from the reign of uh, Richard was issued in the name of his father, uh, Henry. Um, and the only coinage in Richard's name was issued while he briefly controlled the island of Cyprus. Um, he freed his fiance, um, Berengaria of Navarre, from the Byzantine rebel Isaac Komnenos, Komnenos who controlled the island. Uh, he left Cyprus, sold it to the Templars, who in turn sold it to Guy of Lusignan uh, in 1192, who uh, can, his descendants ruled the island down until um, it was bequeathed to Venice in the 15th century. This is a very rare coin um, and uh, against an estimate of 500 Swiss francs, it realized 1,500 in an October 2018 Swiss auction. King Louis IX of France was born in 1214 and came to the throne at the age of 12. Honoring a vow that he had made while praying for recovery during a serious illness, he led the ill-fated Seventh Crusade against the Muslim dynasty ruling in Egypt. He was captured and ransomed for the immense sum of two million livres, or the equivalent of one million gold pheasants, truly a kingly ransom. Uh, at the time, the annual income of the French crown was only about 250,000 livres. In 1270, Louis launched the Eighth Crusade against Tunis in North Africa, 
where he died from dysentery. He was canonized as a saint in 1297. The city of St. Louis, Missouri, uh, founded by uh, French traders in the 1760s was named in his honor. And uh, when the French took control of Tunisia, they erected a cathedral in Tunis on the spot where St. Louis reportedly perished. Uh, the coin here is a gros tournois, a popular coin in, of medieval France, very influential, widely copied. Um, and in Tripoli, uh, the gros tournois was copied as the basis of the local silver coinage. The Knights of St. John, also known as the Hospitallers, right, um, were a crusading order founded in 1099 to manage a hospital in Jerusalem that cared for pilgrims. The order grew immensely wealthy and expanded its mission to the defense of the Crusader states. Following the loss of Jerusalem, the Knights were given the island of Rhodes in the Aegean, which they strongly fortified as a base for operations against the Muslims. And on the left, we see uh, an example of the anonymous Bilan Denier, issued by the Hospitallers on Rhodes, Kivis Rodi, the city of Rhodes. Um, and um, later, the Grand Masters of the Order of the Knights of Rhodes issued um, uh, high value uh, silver coins um, bearing their names and inscriptions. Um, when the uh, island of Rhodes was captured in 1522 by the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, known in Turkish as Suleiman Kanuni, Suleiman the Lawgiver, the knights found refuge on Malta, which they held until Napoleon captured it on his way to Egypt in 1798. The Knights still exist as a Catholic religious order with their headquarters in Rome. The Calician Kingdom of Armenia produced a vibrant culture strongly influenced by interaction with the neighboring Crusader states. Uh, the Armenian rulers uh, often married Crusader princesses. The Crusader states uh, often married Armenian princesses. Um, at, uh, the, the, the court language uh, of the Armenian um, uh, kingdom uh, actually became medieval French at one point. And um, there was an extensive royal coinage that includes some of the most handsome and popular medieval coins collected today. On his way to China in 1271, Marco Polo landed at the Armenian seaport of Ayas, which was a major hub on the Silk Road at that time. After King Richard of uh, England realized that Cyprus would be difficult to rule while he was off crusading in the Holy Land, he sold it to the Templars for 100,000 bezants. The Cypriots revolted against the Templars who begged Richard to take it back. And he gave it to his friend Guy of Lusignan who had failed in his bid to become King of Jerusalem. The Lusignan dynasty 
she held the island until the last queen, Ekaterina, bequeathed it to Venice in 1489. Uh, the Kingdom of Cyprus issued these very Byzantine looking um, debased gold or electrum, white bezants they're called, um, quite rare and under a memorandum of understanding with the government of Cyprus, they may not be imported into the United States. You might ask, when was the last crusade? Uh, some historians say it was the crusade of Varna in the year 1444 when a combined Polish and Hungarian army led by King Vladislav III, who was simultaneously King of Poland, Hungary, and Croatia, was crushed by the Ottoman Turks outside the city of Varna in what is now Bulgaria. The king, just 20 years old, was killed in the battle. Others say it was the 1989 film, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, starring Harrison Ford and Sean Connery. The standard reference work for the coinage of the Crusades is this weighty tome, um, Metcalf, um, the numismatic prime directive uh, is buy the book before you buy the coin. And uh, this book out of print is uh, quite costly, but uh, usually cited in uh, sale catalogs as the standard reference to this coinage. A somewhat more affordable and accessible volume that is still in print is Malloy, Coins of the Crusader States, 2004, which can be found for about $85. A book that I have found enormously useful in my own work is this slender booklet, Reading Medieval European Coins by Ralph Walker. The Atlas of the Crusades, edited by Jonathan Riley Smith, is an absolutely magnificent work of scholarship and graphic design, a beautiful piece of map making. Uh, and it can be found secondhand online for less than $10. Really useful book. A surprising discovery when I was doing the research for this talk was Paul Williams' Complete Idiot's Guide to the Crusades. Uh, it's written with a wonderful sense of humor, right? But uh, the scholarship is, for the most part, quite solid. And um, it's just full of useful information and good background on this period of history. My favorite cartoon from the New Yorker is this one, a group of crusaders riding down from a city and one is saying to the other, looking out over a grove of trees, let's face it, it's all about olive oil. With that, um, let me say a few things in conclusion. Like most medieval coinage, except for the ever popular hammered British series, Crusader coins are not widely collected. Often poorly struck in bad metal with blundered or illegible inscriptions, a few Crusader coins have the sort of eye appeal that makes a collector's pulse race. So except for great rarities or examples in superb condition, Crusader coins are relatively affordable with nice coppers going for well under $100, average billon deniers for under 200, 
And even the gold Saracenic bezants uh, can be found for around $500 to $750. Mike, that was excellent. Thank you for your kind attention. Absolutely. Thank you so and much that, for that. I will stop screen sharing and be happy to entertain your questions. Thank you, Mike. That was an excellent presentation. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. We have uh, one question in the chat uh, from Gilles Bronsberg, our executive director. I don't know if he wants to ask it uh, or I can ask it on his behalf. Let me give him a second to see if he unmutes himself. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Yes. Um, you, you, you did mention the, the, I think it's the Sixth Crusade uh, under the excommunic excommunicated Emperor of Germany or the Holy Emperor of Germany, Friedrich II of Hohenstaufen, who briefly managed to take back Jerusalem through an agreement with the Muslim rulers. Is there any numismatic trace of his stay in the Holy Land? Not to my knowledge. No. Hmm. Uh, there is one question uh, from Douglas Stone on the best way to contact you. I don't know if you want to type in your email in the chat or maybe. Uh, oh, I'm happy to. OK. Uh, let me put in um, my. ibpanda at aol.com. And um, uh, all my articles uh, are uh, archived online at academia.edu under my name, Mike Markowitz. Uh, I might mention also that the, uh, the ANS um, uh, cabinet has an absolutely superb collection of Crusader coins, uh, which you can uh, explore on uh, the Mantis database on the ANS website. Mike, this is uh, Peter. Can I ask you a quick question? Absolutely. Yeah, when these, uh, to the extent you've looked at the hordes of these, are they mixed with other types of coins like Byzantine coins? or um, you know, Arabic coins, or they just seem to be hoarded by themselves, typically? Uh, in, in the Crusader world, uh, precious metal coins were largely interchangeable. And indeed, there are mixed hordes of Islamic Crusader and Byzantine coins. Uh, money was money. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. One just clarification, you mentioned that there's import restrictions on the uh, medieval coins, not just yet, but they certainly asked for them. And, you know, based upon what happens, you know, if they ask for them, they usually get them. So uh, not just yet, but they have asked for them. There was a hearing, you know, before the Cultural Property Advisory Committee, we just haven't heard yet. So uh, stay tuned on that one. Get your, get your medieval, uh, Cypriot coins while you can is my my advice. How's that? <laughs> I see my friend Al Mawats Bala El Shahawi has uh, a question about the cup shaped coin, um, the uh, white bezant of Cyprus, and uh, the reason that coins became cup shaped in the Byzantine world and um, a few imitations is that a curved shell resists bending and cracking as they spread more and more metal to cover a wider area the coins became very thin and a thin coin is easily bent and often if the alloy is brittle it will crack in the striking process but a curved shell right is inherently strong. It was more difficult to make a curved coin, a cup-shaped coin, because it had to be struck twice, right, uh, with a rocking motion on a convex and a concave die. 
there's a great article on that by um, uh, Simon Bendall, the late um, great British numismatist about the striking of cup-shaped coins. Um, but really it was, it, it made the coin harder to counterfeit, but the major reason that coins became cup-shaped was so that they would be more resistant to bending or folding or edge cracking. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Can I see that Bob Leonard has his hand up? Yes, thank you. Um, Mark, this is a fine presentation, but it's a little dated. Um, since uh, your the references you're using are were written almost 30 years ago, and uh, quite a bit has been done in since then with archaeology um, regarding the um, the little copper coin with the head of an emperor on one side and Rex on the other. Uh, the 2021, the current issue of the Numismatic Chronicle has a long paper on that very coin. And uh, you, should, you should look at it. Um, it turns out there's two varieties. There's one like you have that's anonymous. Another one has the ruler's name on it. And the letters are A-M-E, which sounds like uh, Amory, Amory. Ah. Uh, Amalricus II, who ruled it, uh, was a contemporary, as a matter of fact, of Richard the Lionhearted, does not say Ricardus. And one other detail, this is written by a Ukrainian, there's three of these in collections in Ukraine, at the time is submitted for publication, we hope they're still intact. Thank you very much. Uh, I am... Um, uh certainly aware that I am not up to date on the latest scholarship. Are there are any other questions? If anyone wants to chime in, by all means, you're more than welcome to. Mike, can you say something about the military architecture that survived in the, the area? I know there's a fabulous uh, castle at Croc de Chevalier, I guess it's pronounced, that was damaged in the Syrian civil war, but there's a lot of other stuff too, isn't there? Um, the Crusaders were um, enthusiastic castle builders. Uh, they, uh, both the Crusaders and their uh, Islamic adversaries um, shared a kind of um, common engineering tradition. And the, as is often the case in military history, the conflict um, fueled uh, a kind of arms race, uh, continual improvement. So some of the, the strongest and most brilliantly designed castles ever constructed um, uh, still exist in that territory and uh, indeed have actually been fought over in modern wars. Um, there is, as you might imagine, a vast literature on Crusader castles. Um, uh, T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, um, uh, in, in his earlier life, did a lot of um, uh, archaeological work on Crusader castles. Well, thanks. That's interesting. Did he write anything that's available today? Yes. Um, ah. It's in print, his book's in print, I believe, or was recently. He uh, was a young man, he wandered around, uh, lived in the desert by himself and visited and identified a whole bunch of these crusader castles. Mm, neat. Thanks, Bob. And thanks, Mike. Oh, another source that I found uh, very useful is, um, believe it or not, the Hollywood film, uh, Kingdom of Heaven. Um, which unusually for a Hollywood film is uh, quite accurate historically. Um, and uh, that deals 
with the period around the time of Saladin and the fall of Jerusalem. Uh, it's based on uh, the central character played by Orlando Bloom is Balian of Ibelin, um, a, uh, a very famous crusader knight. So uh, if you can find it, uh, it's worth tracking down Kingdom of Heaven, Hollywood film made uh, a few years ago. We have a uh, hand raised, Gary Waddingham, if you wanna ask your question. Well, it isn't so much a question. I wanted to thank you. I have a minor collecting uh, interest in Crusader coins, and some of those coins I have, uh, the coronation tram of uh, Levon the I, I'm using the Elton John pronunciation there. And uh, just a little brief thing, 30 years ago in the Holy Land, we went to a place where some French nuns had originally cared for Palestinian orphans. And at night they would dig and dig in the bottom of their convent. And they found an old church with the bishop's bones still in the chair, but what they found that was most interesting was a house with a stone in front of it that they believe to be the house of Joseph. But there was an altar there, and they believe that the Knights of the Crusaders uh, who said mass there went off and never came back. They died at the horns of Hatin, but they could still, after all those years, smell the incense from the mass. Little story. Those are beautiful icons, Gary. Thank you. Hello. Hello, uh, would you like to ask your question? This is Eric Engstrom. When I was a student at the, at the Ashmolean years and years ago, I noted that some coins had been given the coin room I think by T. Lawrence. That intrigued me, so I wrote a letter to Lawrence's brother, who was in Ireland, a professor, asked if Lawrence had any interest in numismatic. And he replied that no, he, none that he knew of. Interesting. Thank you for watching the American Numismatic Society's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our online resources, publication, and events, you can support the Society by becoming a member. And don't forget to check out our book and eBay stores. The links are below.